Hey, hello you most beautiful and most amazing top tenors. It's happening. Danny and I are hosting a video together. Let's do a high five and I bet it's gonna go wrong. Oh! That was alright. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we're talking about British humour because this is a British video. We're going to be talking about the top 10 facts about who? Queen Elizabeth, the ruler of the UK and Commonwealth. Yeah. And actually, we no longer live in the UK, we live in Canada, but they have her on their money out here, so it's kind of relevant. Yeah, so let's get into our number 10, shall let's we? Let's do it. British stuff with okay. British people. Ooh. <laughs> in at number 10, the Queen is the longest reigning British monarch and the second longest reigning monarch in the world, currently surviving. On September the 9th, 2015, Queen Elizabeth II surpassed Queen Victoria as the longest reigning queen of the United Kingdom. In February of 2017, she will celebrate her 65th year on the throne. In that time, she has seen 13 Prime Ministers of the UK, including two females, as well as 13 Presidents of the United States and seven Popes. The current oldest surviving monarch is Rama the Ninth of Thailand, who's been on the throne for over 70 years. Over to you, Burke. Thanks. Moving on to number nine, the Queen has two birthdays. No, she wasn't born on like a leap day or anything like that. This is actually a tradition in the royal family that dates all the way back to 1748 when George II was getting a bit fed up with his birthday which was in November. Now if anyone here has ever visited the UK in November, you'll know how spectacularly grim it can be. George created a new official birthday for himself in the summer for his annual parade and the tradition has stuck ever since. The Queen was born on April 21st but to avoid April showers, she also also has an official birthday in June so that the weather doesn't spoil any events. And I think I'm gonna do that too. So now my official birthday is July. Yeah, the whole of it. I don't think that's fair. You already have a really good time of birthday. <laughs> <laughs> So speaking of birthdays, in at number 8, the Queen has sent around 200,000 telegrams to British citizens celebrating their 100th birthdays. Happy birthday to you from the Queen. Yep, it is true, the Queen sends you a telegram, although it's actually a card, on your 100th birthday. In 2012, the Queen sent her 175th thousand centenary telegram. Since then, she has sent an average of around 7,000 each year, meaning that by now she must have sent around 200,000 of them. The cards are pretty spectacular and come with an incredible tassel. You also get a card on your diamond and platinum wedding anniversary, so that's your 60th and 70th wedding anniversaries. Those two have plenty of banging tassels. Danny, how do you feel about a tassel? Uh, seven, seven out of ten. Really? Yeah, generally. I've never owned a tassel. You wait till you're a hundred and then you could have a great one. My first tassel. <laughs> Danny's first tassel. <laughs> what a day. If any of you guys want to send Danny a tassel before that so he doesn't have to wait 75 years then. Yeah, PO box down there. Coming in at number 7, on July 9th, 1982, a man called Michael Fagan climbed over the wall surrounding Buckingham Palace, where the Queen lives, and made his way into her private apartment. Out of the 200 bedrooms in the whole of the palace, he managed to find the Queen's. She woke up to find him at the foot of her bed. They then talked for about 10 minutes about all of his life and his problems. He then asked the Queen for a cigarette, and so she very calmly called in her footman from outside, who took Michael away by offering him a glass of whiskey. You couldn't make that up if you tried, but it really, really did happen, and needless to say, security has been a lot tighter ever since. That is insane, I cannot believe it. The Queen has proven herself to be quite a woman and quite a force to be reckoned with over the years. Now, this next fact is one of my favourites about her. Coming in at number six, she was a mechanic in World War II. The Queen is the only monarch to be trained to change a flat tyre or a spark plug. During World War II, she trained as a mechanic in Surrey. In 1942, the then Princess Elizabeth joined the Women's Armed Forces and the Auxiliary Territorial Services. She learned how to deconstruct and rebuild engines and drove ambulances. During the war, she was known as Second Lieutenant Elizabeth Windsor, and I love that. She is such a boss queen. All right, moving on to number five now. The queen has a very detailed family tree. While most of us are lucky to find out who our ancestors were even just a hundred years ago, the British royal family has had every single last member recorded for over a thousand years. In fact, the queen has an undisputed lineage going all the way back to King Egbert, the first king of England, who died in the year 839. On their family tree, between him and her on the family tree, you can find every famous British monarch, including King Henry VIII, William the Conqueror, Elizabeth I, and Queen Victoria. Queen Vic, what an absolute. 
absolute babe. Moving on to number four, Queen Elizabeth II has sat for over 130 portraits in her time, including a hologram portrait. What? Elizabeth sat for her first portrait when she was seven years old, back when she was a princess in 1933. Since then, she has sat for many more. Her latest portrait was finished in 2016 to mark her 90th birthday. At the turn of the century, the Queen had her first ever holographic portrait commissioned by the Jersey Heritage Trust. It was eventually created and finalised by Rob Monday in 2003. Hologram Queen, like that's so cool. Hologram Queen sounds like a Daft Punk album. Coming in at number 3, the Queen technically owns every single whale, dolphin, sturgeon and porpoise in British waters. This strange law was made back in 1324 during the reign of King Edward II and amazingly it's still valid today. If they are caught within 3 miles of the British coast, they can be claimed by the crown and are referred to as Fish's Royal, which kind of sounds like something on the McDonald's menu. I also thought that she owned all of the swans, but apparently it's only the unmarked mute swans, so honey be owning things. In at number two, Queen Elizabeth created a new breed of dog, the Dorgie. Although she had grown up with them, the then Princess Elizabeth was given her own corgi on her 18th birthday. The first in a long line of much loved four legged companions was named Susan, who, by the way, the Queen took with her on her honeymoon. The Queen has owned over 30 corgis in her time, many of whom descended from Susan. Three of the Queen's corgis, Monty, Willow and Holly, appeared in a James Bond skit for the 2012 Olympics. When Elizabeth was a young princess, her and her sister Princess Margaret bred their dogs, a corgi and a dachshund, to create the dorgy. Adorable. A dorgy bull. Yeah. And finally now Rebecca is going to crash my number one yes. and we have the Queen can travel with no passport. No. Yes. I'll tell you why right now. The Queen is a head of state which means that most of her trips are diplomatic missions. Now because of all of this, the paperwork is done long before she ever steps onto a plane. The official monarchy website says that because the British passport is issued in the name of the Queen, it's kind of unnecessary for her to possess one. I like to imagine she just strolls through an airport just pointing at her face. Be like Queen, Queen. Let one through now. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed this video all about uh, Queen Elizabeth II. What other kind of British videos do you think they want us to do. I really want to make a top 10 of Queen Elizabeth II's hats because she has some fabulous hats, more than you have, which is saying something. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm not going to watch that one. No? <laughs> no. It's really good. She has so many good hats. And we could do um, top 10 British cakes, and Battenberg would definitely be at number one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm starting to think you should just make a channel just about British being things British. for British people. You need to join me though. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not as British as you. I'm not as British as you. <laughs> um, here we are, making British stuff. I don't know why Lan. London didn't want to be here, but no. there you go. Well, before we just fall into a puddle of Britishness, uh, we're going to wrap up the video now. Make sure you subscribe, guys. Two videos over there next to Rebecca. Yeah, my name's Danny Burke. My name's Rebecca Felgate, and thank you once again for joining us on Most Amazing Top 10. If you like this video and these two British fools right here, give this video a big old thumbs up. And of course, make sure you're subscribed to Most Amazing Top 10. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>